Naming Ionic Compounds Part 1 Cations, Anions, and Ionic Bonds Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what ionic bonds are. And basically, they are electrostatic attractions that form between oppositely charged ions. So if we have a positive ion and a negative ion, then those two are attracted to each other through electrostatic attractions. Now, let's just remind ourselves what cations are. And basically, if you have an atom and it loses one or more electrons, so it's going to lose some negative charge, and it's going to form a positively charged ion. So there will be more protons than electrons in that ion. Now, anions are the opposite. So then an atom that starts off neutral gains electrons and forms a negatively charged ion. So that means that it has more electrons than protons. So that's where that negative charge comes from. Now, ionic bonds are generally formed between metals and nonmetals. OK, so let's just remind ourselves about identifying metals and nonmetals on the periodic table. This is really important. You want to be able to just do this at a glance. OK, so here's a picture of a periodic table. So. We have our nonmetal area here, and all of these guys, metals, with the exception of hydrogen. Okay, so let's go through this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's start with groups one and two. Okay, and these guys form very predictable ions. And now, just the first thing, hydrogen is considered a nonmetal, even though it's in group one, but everything else here is a metal. So lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, these are all metals. Now all of these metals form plus one ions. So that means they form cations, they lose one electron. Okay? Group two is follows a similar rule. So it's in group two. All of these guys form plus two cations, and they are all metals. Okay? Now we have a few other main group metals that have common uh, ions that form, and one of them, aluminum, forms a plus three, and it's in group three. Okay, so this is summing up what we said. Okay, so metals form cations, so positively charged ions, they lose electrons, they have more protons than electrons. So some examples, a sodium cation, he's in group one, forms a plus one cation. Magnesium is in group two, forms a plus two cation. And aluminum is, is in group three, and it forms a plus three cation, okay? Now, main group metal cations have a positive charge equal to the group number, and that especially applies to groups one and two. So again, even though hydrogen is considered a nonmetal, it is in group one, and it does usually form plus one ions, cations, except when it's bonded to metals. Okay, so now there's another type of metals that we should be concerned about on the periodic table, and that's the transition metals, okay? So sometimes this is called the D block, because these elements all have D electrons. But all of these guys in here, in the center part of the periodic table, are metals. They don't necessarily have predictable ions, so as you work with them, you'll, you may get more familiar with which ions each individual metal forms. But for instance, iron can form a plus three and a plus two cation. And these tra and the transition metals, most if not all, have different ions that they can form and that they regularly do form. Okay, so let's just summarize that. And so transition metals form cations, okay? So they lose electrons, form positively charged ions. So basically metals form cations. And most have more than one possible charge. So here's a few examples, like I already mentioned. Iron, which is Fe, can form a 2 plus or a 3 plus cation. Copper, another metal that we've heard of and are familiar with, forms plus 1 and plus 2. And gold, another metal that we're familiar with, plus 1 and plus 3. OK, so now let's take a look at the nonmetals. So these guys right here, OK? These, that, this is basically the nonmetal part of the table, the right hand side of the table. They generally form anions or negatively charged ions when they're in ionic compounds. Now, nonmetals can also form covalent bonds.
so they don't always form ions. But when they're in ionic compounds, nonmetals form anions. So they have excess negative charge. They have excess electrons. So a few examples, the chloride anion, Cl minus, okay, oxide, so this is oxygen, gains two extra electrons. Oxide anion, the sulfide anion, so this is sulfur, gains two extra electrons. And just this statement down here, just to remind you, so nonmetals form covalent as opposed to ionic bonds when they're bonded to other nonmetals. Now, noble gases, which are in group eight, they do not form ions. So I'm going to go back to the previous slide, and I'm just going to point that out. So these guys right here, these are the noble gases, and they do not form ions. Okay, and then finally, here are the metalloids. So you might see slightly different definitions on different tables, but this is the most common arrangement or, you know, identification of metalloids. And so these are just uh, elements that have properties that are in between metals and nonmetals. And in general, they form covalent as opposed to ionic bonds in compounds. And in particular, if a metalloid is bonded to a nonmetal, then it's going to form covalent as opposed to ionic bonds. And we'll talk about covalent bonding later on in the course. Okay, so let's just summarize the whole thing. All right, metals form cations in ionic compounds. They are positively charged ions formed when an atom loses electrons. So it has more protons than electrons. That's where that positive charge comes from. Nonmetals form anions in ionic compounds. And so anions are negatively charged ions that have excess electrons, so they gained extra electrons, and that's where that negative charge comes from. And ionic compounds form between metals and nonmetals. So an ionic bond is just an electrostatic attraction, so it's that positive attracted to negative, that attraction between two oppositely charged ions.